Hello, friends and family. It's Tuesday, the 17th of September, and I'm still rocking my vertigo for another day. Cheers. Thank you very much for um, allowing me to have a smooth transition regarding my personal health and <laughs> this big gap in my mouth. I'm getting used to it. Only had to delete one person, you know, uh, yesterday. Still, after all these years, I have people, racists, coming over here trying to character assassinate me with false accusations, and it's just really bizarre. You know, I make the, I, I immediately make the connection to what is happening in the, the, the country right now with politics. It's very, very disconcerting, very disappointing, um, angering. So thank goodness for the solace of, of, of our personal lives. You can step away from the, the mad chatter in the uh, media for a while and listen to music and do other things. I gotta walk. I gotta walk more. I gotta walk longer today. I gotta push it a little bit. I need to. You know, as we get older, we sit more, and that ain't good. So pretty much every day anymore, we hear about the passing of famous people or people who have touched our lives. Like, for example, yesterday, Tito Jackson of the Jacksons. It's the only thing I have by the Jacksons, except for more singles, no albums. R Raleigh Mosman, who was in Swans, produced a bunch of good records. Here in Nebraska, Charlie Burton, but also it's it's being felt besides Nebraska. He was in Austin for a while. He had a reputation. His band actually traveled to New York in the heyday of punk to play at CBGB. It's an interesting story. And then later in the day, I hear the news directly from uh, Renat Knaup. She was in the band Amandol 2. That Olaf Kubler passed away as well. I pulled this. Olaf Kubler was a German musician, um, producer, who was associated. I always associated him with Amandol 2, although he was actually never a member of the band. He produced this album, which is amazing. He, and he plays on several... He plays on the main Amandul 2 albums, the best ones. Saxophone and other instruments. But he's um, responsible for the production of this. And this t is an absolute classic of what we call space rock and psychedelia. Never mind that stupid K word, Kraut Rock. I, I feel a, a direct connection to Amandul and to Olaf Kubler through Renat and a couple other folks who have befriended me through social media. Uh, Renat actually responded to my um, uh, wishing her condolences. Um, we're connected. It's very interesting, although I've never met her. For me, and I think it's generally true, this band were revolutionary in many ways. I do understand that the um, changing of the music is connected with politics historically, too. The student um, protests... Um, Unrest back in the uh, 60s, it's, it's documented online in, in history. I listened to this all the way through yesterday. It's a double album. And when I got to side four, as I'm listening, I, 
I realized I haven't listened to this this side since probably the 80s. But as I listened to the album, it it was a very visceral experience because there's sounds on here that I had never heard before when I first heard them. I, I heard this before I was able to own it. Going to the record store, you know, I'd bugged and play records, you know, the original Homers and other record stores, you know. I asked them, asked them to play records in the store, and they would sometimes, and that's one. They make sounds on there that I had never heard before, and actually since really haven't heard like that. Important band. Um, Olaf Kubler was also in, involved with the original Passport band. Klaus Dolinger, Olaf Kubler, I don't have the jazz records, but he has a background in jazz. And I think it sounds like maybe he was more of a jazzer before a rock and roller and then moved into, but someone who knows can say. But this is the first uh, Passport album, Doldinger. And there he is, next to Klaus Doldinger, Olaf Kubler. I understand from his friends online that he was a a real character, an upbeat sort of character, very accepting sort of human being. Um, and I think it shows in his playing, his saxophone playing, the uh, saxophone parts that he adds to the Amandul records are... They're, they're also reminiscent of what Didier Malherbe d did in Gong. It's a, it's a very important voice in the music that brings balance as well as <clears throat> a good feeling. So Olaf Kubler is not a household name to, mo to hardly anyone that listens to music, but an important one to me. And... Um, I definitely wanted to come on here and recognize his passing. I'll be focused on music again today as well as walking because it is my habit. It is part of my habit to look at what's happening in the news daily and, you know, several times during the day. And the madness of of um, the Trump, um, the red, white, red, blue situation is just, it just makes me, it angers me. Records to show that are sitting out. Sons of Arca, Wadada Magic. This is a reissue. Slightly dubby, very repetitious. Um but hypnotic. I first heard this when I was in Japan back in the 90s. And um, it's very repetitive, but it works. It just, it, it just becomes hypnotic. Yeah, a lot of Eastern feeling in the, uh, the droniness. This is good. I had an original, I bought this not that long ago, reissue of it, Jeanne, Electric Silence. Side one of this is the, is, the, is the bomb. I love that cover too. Absolutely love that cover image. It was nuts to sell the original, but like I've been, been very honest about, you know, I've gone through some changes. So I'll share this. I got a call. I got a message from Simon Joyner a couple days ago that he got the sin for me. So I, got, I went and grabbed it. The latest in the live albums from Cannes. Live in Aston, 1977. No Damo Suzuki. This is with Roscoe Gee. This kind of just hums along. 
And then not much really happens on the first side. It's on side two where Ermin Schmidt is the person who takes up the mantle to make something happen. Michael Caroli's um, guitar playing, for me, has only at times been um, of interest because he meanders and he wasn't very good. And the way it worked in Can worked, but without the other elements, I, I think he would have fallen flat on his face to, to my ears. The other ever-present fascinating aspect of Can is Jackie Liebesit's drumming. Um, Ogazukai's bass, bass playing is the perfect, a, a perfect foil for it. But um, I, I need, uh, you know, I collect Can, so it's definitely something I wanted. So when I heard of Olaf Kuhler's passing yesterday, the first album I looked for to play was this. Utopia. Not Todd Rundgren's Utopia. This predates Todd Rundgren calling his band Utopia. This is a kind of a jam band project that appears to have been spearheaded by Olaf Kubler. And it, it involves members of Amundul, Embryo, and other German bands. It has a great version of the song Deutsch Nepal, which is on Wolf City by Amandol 2. But this version is really good too, and I love the same graphics for Amandol on here. These, these pictures perfectly encapsulate how I remember progressive psychedelic underground music in the 70s. It was my mindset. I live here in Nebraska, so I was disconnected from, you know, being in England and Europe. But at the time, when Virgin Records first started getting going, and they had an advertising campaign where they were lumping together Faust, Henry Cow, Gong, and then and then um, lumped in with that by the press was Can and a few other bands. For me, that was ground zero after a while. After I got turned onto those bands at, in the 70s, it was like, that's what I was looking for besides the Genesis and other progressive rock. Really important music to me. Showed this recently, where I bought this recently, played this again. This is really special. Genesis by Wendy and Bonnie. And actually, there's an innocence to their lyrics that kind of um, saves them when I listen to it the, because they're so useful. They sound like teens. And they have, but of course, they have crack session musicians backing them. Mike Melvine, um, Wendy Melvine's husband, uh, um, uh, father, well-known um um, excuse me, musician, um, studio musician. I think he was the head of, um, oh, let me just stop. Larry Carlton on, on guitar. You could be Jim Keltner on, Keltner on drums. You can hear their, um, you know, their, their tracks are listenable by themselves. And there are a couple of instrumentals on here. Good stuff. Good stuff. So I'm rambling a little bit. I won't, I won't stay long, but I thought I'd come on and acknowledge the passing of Olaf Kubler. More than likely, just because of um, statistics and age, the age of rock and roll. Most More than likely, someone else well-known or someone who's important to us music lovers will pass away today it's just it's just the way it is so that's what i have for today i won't belabor it
nice to hear from you folks, as always. You take care.